This time on Marvel, Captain America, gone. Sam, full of doubt. Hands over the shield to the government. Bucky, meanwhile, is filled with PTSD and depression and seeing a court-ordered therapist. And then the government betrays Sam and gives it to some other guy who clearly should have had a psych evaluation. Stand by for Falcon Winter Soldier Z coming next. You're doing the Dragon Ball Z intro. I'm doing every freaking intro. <laughs> How many freaking shows do that? <laughs> this is the Out of Touch Podcast. Welcome back to the Out of Touch Podcast, where we're reviewing Falcon and Winter Soldier. This is the opinion you've been waiting for, because nobody else online is talking about this show. And if they are, you don't care and you're waiting for what we have to say about it. So, I'm Chris, that's Bill, and uh, we're talking about Falcon Winter Soldier. So, Bill, what did you think of the MCU's second foray into television on Disney Plus? Uh, I mean, it's good. It's, it's, more, it's just a really long Marvel movie when I, it gets down to it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's like, what if Captain M what if Captain America and the Winter Soldier was like three or four hours long? That's kind of what this was. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, you know, before this was WandaVision and that was its own That was very thing. left of center. Yeah, uh, this was more of what you would expect from a Marvel TV show. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, few few nice uh, callbacks, but yeah, I, I, I guess... I don't know how to approach talking about this show um, if we just we should, go episode by episode. Uh, or... it's, it's basically a mini series, it's basically a movie. Doing episode episode by episode doesn't really matter. We just do a quick overall of the plot. Like the long and short of it is, this is basically Sam Wilson's spoilers for just spoilers. If you've, you've seen it, oh if spoilers! If you're watching this, you've seen it. Why haven't you seen it? It's Marvel. Everybody's seen it. Go watch it. <laughs> but the long and short of it is, this is just a protracted origin story for Sam Wilson to be Captain America. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Like, he was given the shield at the end of Avengers Endgame, but he's like, oh, well, maybe there's more to it than that. Maybe he looks at them and goes like, oh boy, this is a burden. Yeah, that or, you know, it's just like, there's, there's a lot of uh, um, consequences <laughs> and, you know, realities to... African American man having the shield, especially in America. On the positive side, it's a good origin story. Yeah. They they lean into the heavy themes, but I mean, they're only going so far because it's still a Marvel property. Because at the end of the day, it's got to be upbeat and fun, unless it's Avengers: Infinity War. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and really, Avengers: Infinity War is only bad at the very end. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> That movie made $2 billion. If you haven't seen that movie, why are you even watching this? The movie that literally everyone in the world saw. And if they didn't, they don't watch movies. Yeah. But um, I guess, you know, going it's, into the show, it starts off with Sam handing the shield over to the museum, uh, the Smithsonian in Washington. Which, as we've seen before, has a Captain America wing, which is now a bit more detailed with like... Uh, later adventures and all that yeah and it is one of those things where like sam's like you know i this shield doesn't belong to me it's steve's and in some ways sam's like no nobody could replace steve as captain america where it's almost like one of those things where it's just like captain america is not really a title it was like steve rogers so yeah that type of thing but you know as the show goes on we find out that the U.S. government's like, no, we're going to make a new Captain America. But it is an interesting part, uh, especially at the beginning, because it's weird. Sam is not really an Avenger. He's sort of working for the government, but at the same time, he's kind of a freelancer. Well, he even says he's just him and Bucky are freelancers. They do get referred to as Avengers. We don't really know what the current state of the Avengers is yet. Yeah. Like, because... The, their base blew up, so like we don't really know what's if they're even still technically is a team. Like, yeah, they are Avengers in that they were Avengers, but is there still like an active Avengers team? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be the case though. Yeah, most of the roster has disbanded or died, died. or gone elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
Um, so Sam is kind of just working as... He's trying to like re pick up the pieces of his family life after because he was gone for five years, but his sister and his nephews, they weren't gone. They were there for five years alone, struggling financially, because she's a widower, a widow. Yeah. It's weird that this like blip thing is something that Marvel's really leaning into. Uh, it's like, no, this happened. You kind of, you have to. Yeah. Half the world disappeared in Avengers Infinity War. There's consequences to that. It, yeah, and it is interesting that it, it is this like big event that is constant, that we're still seeing the repercussions of in all the shows so far. Um, I don't know, in some ways you, you would think because these are movies, they might be like, oh, that was an end game thing and that doesn't matter, but Marvel's kind of changing it where it's just like all of our movies and TV shows are just one big saga that you have to watch everything. Oh, absolutely. Like you, I'm a, D, I'm a DC fan, so on the DC side of things, I'm like, I can cherry pick what's coming up. Marvel, I'm like, oh, if I, I, gotta, I gotta watch everything. I, I, under normal circumstances, I probably wouldn't bother with Miss Marvel or Ironheart or Moon Knight or some of these other shows, but I'm like, ah, no, I can't miss them. I gotta, I gotta see every episode of Marvel to know what's going on. Yeah, I'll be <laughs> lost in the next episode of Marvel when it comes out in the movies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's just like this epic ongoing saga. <laughs> it's very much reflecting the comic books in a lot of ways now, uh, just with how much there is and well, I guess my final thoughts of the show, I'll go more into detail about that. But um, yeah, it, it's interesting. Sam is working for the government. You see a pretty spectacular action scene where he's uh, trying to recover some soldiers that are being held hostage on a plane. They, he does his like wing flight stuff and it looks you know, like the movie because that's what they promised us. It's just like these shows, Marvel shows are movie quality shows except shows. <laughs> like, I mean, they definitely front loaded it this time because like, I don't think anything gets as like spectacular as that opening scene with him. Yeah. Cause like, which is fine because this is a more grounded story. Like, and like, you don't really need the big, huge scale things. You just, we just need to feel like, oh, they're not, they're cheaping out on this. It's just people punching in an alleyway. 90 times a freaking huh. week, like on freaking Netflix. <laughs> right. It was fine for Daredevil, but every other show is like, oh my God, I get it. You're punching <laughs> someone in an alleyway. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it, I guess the main thing is like Sam is, you know, he does this mission and you find out from, I guess his liaison, Torres. It was someone, it was just another member of the mission who he kind of bonded with. Yeah, it's weird too because they never say what branch of the military he's working for. His tag says Air Force. Oh, so he is Air Force. Okay. Yeah, I, I noticed it when I was rewatching that it, it said Air Force on his uniform. Nice. Okay, yeah. so he's working for the Air Force. And uh, you know, being able to fly will come in handy for him at a later date. Yeah. <laughs> and he has this guy Torres, and Torres kind of tells him about like, hey, have you heard about this group called the Flag Smashers? They kind of want to bring the world back to what it was during the uh, blip. Ugh. Or I, what do they call it? Because I know the blip is when everybody came out. Uh, but came they say back. during the blip, like yeah. I don't know, they've been kind of weird. Because like everyone called it this, the fans called it the snap. Yeah, Thanos snapped his fingers. The snap caused everyone to go away. I guess That's it, it. I guess it should be. And then the like, snap when everybody was uh, was gone, and then the blip is when everybody came back. So. But then everybody was just like, oh, he was blipped uh, during the blip, and it's just like. Eh, just stop calling it that. I don't think any. I don't think fans like it. <laughs> <laughs> get get the terminology straight. So I'll just say during the snap is when everybody was gone, and then the blip is when everybody came back. So this group is trying to make the world back to the way it was during the snap because there was less people. Uh, so like all like all the displaced people of the world were actually suddenly welcomed by everybody because workforces were needed for infrastructure to rebuild yeah because everything must have just went to hell yeah a bunch of planes probably like crashed out of the sky a bunch you... of like plants probably like didn't have workers and... oh uh, so so many people die <laughs> uh it's it's really kind of that whole scenario is very nightmare inducing cars crashing yeah buses of children crashing because the driver disappeared babies starving to death because their parents snapped away like oh just oh. <laughs> 
My, my brain goes to some dark places. That's, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, we, we do see some of it in the post credit scene of Infinity where we see a helicopter crash to a building. Right. Right when Nick Fury disappears. Yeah. And... All hell just breaks loose. And like, I guess for some reason, they really, the Flag Smashers are like, yeah, all that horror and nightmare, that was good for us. Well, I guess it's like, well, after the nightmare, everybody came together and... Yeah, but I mean, half the planet was like suffering depression, but yeah, it was, it was nice that things were okay for you, but you know, everyone else's misery and depression, that's, you're okay with that. I'm sorry, yeah. I have some issues with the Flag Smashers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I've, I've heard something that their plot got altered apparently because of COVID because they had something to do with like a virus originally they I, wanted to release. I think they've denied that. Oh, okay. So I don't know. But like, yeah, the, the Flag Smashers are led by some young girl named Carly Morgenthau, right? I think that's right. Yeah, she was also She's in Irish. that. Irish. She was also in that solo, the Star Wars story, playing that little girl who was wearing like the bounty hunter mask. Oh. She's in the movie for like five minutes. Okay. I've only seen that movie once, so. It's a very forgettable movie. Interesting. Um, yeah, she's the main villain, I guess. And, yeah, I mean, I guess we're supposed to sympathize with her, but I don't really. I don't really. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I understand like her problem, so I understand why Sam sympathizes with her. Yeah, because I guess the big thing is when the people came back, the people that were getting opportunities all of a sudden were kind of pushed to the side and... It's like, well, everybody's back, so... You have to uh, get out of their house. Yeah. <laughs> You're living in their house. You have to leave. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to give the person that just came back their job back. And just like, you guys that migrated to like other countries to do work because they needed work, um, go back home, I guess. Go away. <laughs> yeah. Like, I understand why she's mad. I'm just... Don't... She, she starts killing people, and I'm like, yeah, no. Screw you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, well, I'll prove that we're right through terrorism. And that always works, I guess. Not yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I guess the show is mostly them trying to figure out what's up with the Flag Smashers. Uh, pretty early on, we do find out that the Flag Smashers are enhanced. We don't know how they're enhanced. But they are super soldiers. Yeah. Like... And that's like one of the big, there's two, I guess, big MacGuffins that are like important for this show. MacGuffin one, the super soldier serum, and MacGuffin two, Captain America shield. Both of them symbolically involve Captain America. Both these things are unique to him. The super soldier made him what he was. The, the, the shield was the symbol of which he carried, which yeah. I think that was good. That was smart. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and I guess, to talk about uh, Winter Soldier briefly, because yeah. I almost forgot. Yeah, I was I mean, I'm like, we should probably talk about Bucky for a minute. Yeah. Because, like, he's the other <laughs> title character. Like, we meet up with him. He's trying to, like, make amends for all the horrible things he was brainwashed and forced to do as the Winter Soldier. Yeah, he's got a list similar to Steve, except the list is... In the same the, book. <laughs> yeah, all, all the names of the people that he hurt or... Helped put into power that yeah. were evil. <laughs> I mean, we get a pretty fun scene where he's talking to his therapist and she's kind of, she's kind of an asshole, honestly, but... Uh, I mean, he kind of needs the tough love, I feel. Yeah. Though, ultimately, I think Sam did a better job than she did. Yeah. But he's also kind of trained in that stuff, as we saw when he first debuted. Right. <laughs> he has a pretty fun moment where he uh, makes amends for one of the people on his list it's some like hydra lady that he like a hydra plant or something like that yeah, who's just like ruling through her own doing her own shit now because hydra's gone <laughs> yeah and he like he uh kind of gets her arrested and he, has, he does this thing where he's just like he's just like uh my name is bucky barnes and i'm no longer the winter soldier type of thing like he goes up like, like he's an aa and he's trying to make amends for someone he he, he uh hurt while he was drunk yeah <laughs> which is kind of funny <laughs> in a twisted sort of way yeah yeah like his arc is just like i gotta come to terms with this like in the first episode we see he's hanging out with this older asian man who we saw in a flashback, he killed his son on a mission because he saw him. Yeah. Because just murdered his ass. Yeah, and he's trying to work up the courage to like tell this guy, I, I 
killed your son. I mean, this guy is like still like, you know, pretty in deep mourning for his son. As you would be as a parent. Yeah, I mean, since it happened. I mean, there's an interesting line in the first episode where he goes on a date with like this girl and she says like, you know, there's like a word for if you're like, wife or husband dies but there's not a word for like a parent that like loses their children yeah it's like uh, uh when your parents die you're an orphan if your husband or dies you're a widow or a widower but there's no word for a parent that loses a child yeah, yeah. that was interesting that's a that's an interesting observation because there really isn't yeah I'm, I'm sure maybe in other languages there there must be maybe? but uh, I don't know. not in english um yeah so bucky's trying to come to terms with this and he ends up working with Sam to find out what's going on with the Flag Smashers. Also, he's very mad at Sam for handing over the shield. Yeah, extremely mad. Especially when because the Flag Smashers start escalating their attacks, the government's just like, we got our own new Captain America. Yeah, new Captain America, John Walker. And to be honest, I never really hated this guy as much as people were like, oh, I hate John Walker like on the internet. And I was like, He's kind of just like a dude trying to do the best he can. Like, he's kind of abrasive, but, like, that just makes him a three-dimensional character. Yeah. Like, he's probably the m- more fleshed out than Sam and Bucky in some, in some ways. Like, Maybe a little bit, He's like, yeah. his character's more nuanced. Like, Bucky's character arc is pretty basic. He's just like, fucking just say something to the old Asian man, you bastard. Yeah. And Sam's just got to, like, he's got some more meat to work with than Bucky, I think but we'll, we'll get to that. But yeah, yeah I was, I'm actually glad that John Walker ended up being more nuanced because this character could have easily just been a one-dimensional a-hole the entire time. Yeah, at the beginning of the show, I thought, are they going to just do like Nuke from like Jessica Jones again? But Yeah, I thought they might be... I was hoping that they weren't because like I always figured this could go a couple different ways. Like, way one is you just, yeah, he's just a full-on prick. He's an asshole. The second you meet him, you're like, oh, God, this guy's the worst. He's horrible. He's a monster. He's just a sociopath from the, from the jump. Or you go the other way, which I thought could, could have been interesting, where, oh, no, he actually is really a good man, and then somebody murders his ass. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Instead, they took, like, a weird kind of nuanced, like, he's a good man, but he's not right for Captain America. Yeah, he's very much like, um, he has an interesting line uh, early on in the show. He has like a friend that he works with throughout his whole career as being a soldier. And he says like something like, I did like these like terrible things and they gave me medals for doing them. It's like I got medals so I would never forget the worst day of my life. Yeah, yeah. His Captain America suit's kind of interesting because like a lot of people are calling him like, discount Walmart Captain America or things like that. But it's just like, it really is just identical to Steve's suit. It's just a little different. Yeah, yeah. Like It's not like made cheaply or anything like that. Like he's got like a different helmet. I guess the thing that- uh, Like no white, it's just blue and red. Yeah, the thing that probably is like a little weird is the A is incorporated into the star and it kind of looks weird. But I think he's, I think the idea is that it just doesn't quite look right because it's like they took like his future costume but made it more like Captain America yeah I mean this guy he definitely comes off better than he apparently did in the comics where he was just kind of like a bigger jerk yeah I don't know too much about John Walker in the comics besides he becomes US agent and he's the Captain America that wears the black outfit and he's the West Coast Avengers Captain America I know uh, he was Captain America for a little bit I think during at least maybe one of the times Steve Rogers was nomad yeah yeah I think it was like the first time he was nomad actually and like he also had a moment where he kind of like snapped because somebody killed his parents hmm so he kind of follows a similar trajectory. Like, he's not a villain. Like, he's just, like, a more aggressive Captain America, kind of. Yeah, I guess, like, like he's more I, willing to just, like, follow orders instead of, like, Steve being like, wait a minute, what am I doing? No, let's, like, talk this out. Yeah. Where he's like, okay, let's like, do it. And his, when we see him at the end in his U.S. agent outfit, my first thought was, like, huh, Black Ops Captain America. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Um, man, we're just all over the place. But that's... I guess we should just talk about characters. Yeah, I mean, that's because that's what this really is. It's, it's character-based and story-based. Yeah. 
one of our, uh, we have a returning character. We have uh, Sharon Carter, who's terrible now, <laughs> as Bucky put it. <laughs> yeah. I, awful. She's awful now. <laughs> I do like the reveal of uh, Madripoor as in oh, that was the cool. MCU. And it's just like, it's like one step closer to the X-Men. So Madripoor is like a, almost like a old school pirate nation. Yeah. And it's primarily involved in the world of the X-Men, which they only just got the rights to. And I'm not gonna lie, as soon as they got there, I'm like, come on, patch reference, patch reference. <laughs> and we get his bar. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's weird. It's like Magipore is like Singapore, except in Singapore, there's like a lot of rules. In Magipore, there's no rules. And I guess it's like pirate era Singapore. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I think that's kind of the idea of it. Yeah. I mean, the name alone. Yeah, you never really learn exactly where Majapur is, but you're like assumed it's like oh, okay, it's somewhere Southeast Asia. From the way it looks, so. yeah, and like the music they kind of play. I mean, it seems to be ruled by a, a mysterious entity known as the Power Broker, who is the identity of is blatantly obvious pretty quickly. Yeah, because there's only so many characters in the show, and if a, like everyone was like it's Sharon Carter, and I'm like it probably is. Or maybe we don't find out who the power broker is, and that's just something for a later day. But no, it's Sharon Carter. I like it. I'm fine with it. It's kind of weird, though, that Sharon Carter was a pretty important S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, and then it almost seems like, yeah, the government just, like, forgot about her, or... It kind of works, because I feel like Marvel forgot about her for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because she's like, when they go visit her, she has all this like stolen art, and she's she's she's, just, she's blatantly revealing that she's a crime kingpin. Yeah, she's like, she's got goons. And stuff. Like, how do you know she's not the? How do you not figure out that she's the power broker? Yeah. And like, her big thing is some. There's a scientist who cracked the code and figured out how to do the super soldier serum. Like in in the world of the MCU, the super soldier serum was developed by Erickson. Is his name? Something? Yeah, I almost said the wrong guy. Um, I don't remember his name. I'm thinking of the bad guy in the TV. I'm like, <laughs> that's not his name. But yeah, the the, the nice scientist in Captain America. Yeah, and he uh, a prototype version was used by the Red Skull and it turned him into a freaking monster. Made him even worse because the formula has a tendency to amplify your worst traits, which is why he chose skinny Steve Rogers, humblest of men, good, decent guy who got his strength and still remain a good person. And any attempt to replicate it has seemed to just be bad because we see like a, a knockoff in Incredible Hulk that led to abomination because yeah. that guy got addicted to the power, took some of the Hulk's blood, became a freaking monster. Was the Hulk in MCU also an attempt to replicate yes. uh, yeah. the super soldier? He, he, he mentioned, yeah. Ross does mention that Banner was didn't know he was working on what was essentially part of that. Yeah, okay. So that's like an ultimate Marvel thing. Yeah. And of course, we find out that back in the 50s, I guess. Yeah, it's like during the Korean War, so... At least that's when he fought, because they lean into the story of a man named Isaiah Bradley, who was a, one of many black men, given what they didn't know, what they thought was like, did you say it was like a tetanus shot in this? Yeah, they, they thought they were just getting like some sort of vaccine to go like fight in a war, but it was actually an experimental like drug to turn them into super soldiers. And Isaiah is the only one that survived like, the drug. Like, well, they were all giving a different variant. And yeah, the variant like, they gave Isaiah, he survived. Yeah, and I, or at least they were given the same one and it had different effects on all of them. Some lived longer than others. And he was the only one that didn't die. Yeah. He became... Basically a, a guinea pig. Yeah. And he essentially did get all the powers of the super soldier. And because he was just serving his country and because he was like a black man, they're like, well, yeah, thanks for your service, but uh, you're going to jail for 30 years so we can experiment on you. Which is really, really messed up. And I think that's close to what happens in the comic for that character, but I don't know for sure. But I know it's kind of similar. There's definitely some beats that are more... I, I, I was curious enough, I was going to try to read it before we did this, but I just didn't get a chance. But uh, I think like it covers more or less similar ground. I don't want to talk out of turn based 
because I didn't read the story. I think the story is called Captain America Truth. It's the one where when Steve finds out I think, I think about it's, this, he's yeah. just like, what the hell? And yeah, I think it's Captain America Truth, Red, White, and Black. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I think Steve Rogers is like uses like a framing device as he like learns about this and presumably just gets madder and madder. And well, if there was someone he could punch in the face about it, I, I imagine he would want to, but yeah, all the people that did it are probably long dead. Yeah, definitely. But you did meet Isaiah. Um, I don't know the actor who does him, but he's really good. I Carl know Lumbly. He, yeah, I Mar was going to say he's something famous. <laughs> the voice of the Martian Manhunter from the Justice League cartoon. Oh, man, that's him? Yeah, I love that's, that guy. That's awesome. <laughs> that's even cooler now. Yeah, they like that makeup they put him in, because he doesn't look that old. Because he was also in the movie uh, Doctor Sleep recently. Okay. He's playing the ghost of uh, the guy... The, the guy that can shine. The other guy that can shine. I can't remember yeah. his name. Yeah, yeah that he was, worked at the hotel. Yeah, he was playing his ghost and did a pretty good job kind of like standing in for the other actor. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So we like, get the Isaiah Bradley story. Uh, and that like that hits Sam Wilson like a ton of bricks and that kind of like lingers in, in like the, the rest of the series like the fucking hell, man. Yeah, it's also kind of like the sort of catalyst for like Bucky being like, okay, like I was mad at you for giving up the shield because, you know, I thought like it meant that like, you know, Steve believed in you and if he was wrong about you, then he's wrong about me because he believed in me. But then Bucky kind of realizes like, oh, like me and Steve didn't realize giving a shield to a black man would, you know, have all the consequences that it does, you know. In fairness, they've missed a lot of history. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They they did miss a lot of history. I mean, Steve Rogers probably been he's been trying to catch up, but he's probably mostly been watching History Channel documentaries in between Avengers missions. Yeah. And Bucky's been brainwashed half the time. Yeah, he's just been <laughs> killing people. Yeah, but like, uh, yeah, like the nuance is is interesting. It's good. Like, I do like. The, uh, the kind of the breakdown of the John Walker Captain America, where his he kind of he gets his ass kicked. He gets a hold of the, the new Super Soldier Serum, which was used on the Flag Smashers, and yeah. then like a moment of like so much self doubt and pressure, uses on himself, and then his friend gets killed, and his fucking brain snaps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I and guess we should talk about Zemo. We probably should talk about Zemo. Yeah, because we're all over the place. But, like, they, they end up breaking Zemo <laughs> out of prison because they originally think, like, maybe the Flag Smashers are connected to Hydra. I mean, they weren't technically wrong on that. That's true. They weren't. So they break Zemo out. We find out Zemo's a Baron. And he's super fun. Um, he's got so much more personality in this than he did in Captain America Civil War. Yeah. He, you know, he's rich and, like... He's got an Alfred head. <laughs> He's great. He's just a snarky asshole. Talks yeah. out of turn at every po moment he can. <laughs> I do like how this version of Zemo is pretty much his whole deal is, you know, superpowers are bullshit. And <laughs> I want to kill everybody with superpowers. And there's like a moment where, you know, uh, they're chasing the Flag Smashers. They find out they have the Super Soldier Serum. And uh, Zemo, like, I guess somehow all the super soldier serum falls on the floor. Like, and it's in these little glass vials. And for a second, you're like, oh, is Zemo going to grab one of the vials <laughs> for himself? And he just starts stepping on all of them. Just smashes. He just goes like, smash, smash, smash. Yeah. And if I do remember correctly, too, they find the guy that was able to make the super soldier serum from Isaiah's blood. And Zemo, like, shoots him immediately or something. Well, they talk to him for a bit. The, uh, we find out he was working for Hydra. Then Hydra fell, and he started working for the CIA. But then he turned to dust because of Thanos, reappeared. CIA had decided, yeah, we're not going to do this anymore. And, but he ended up in Magifor working for the Power Broker, where he cracked the code, made a version of the Super Soldier Serum that doesn't turn people gigantic. So, like, you could just put it in, say, a young, unassuming teenage girl. 
Yeah, it's weird too because it doesn't even like change your physical appearance. This version, it just they just like kind of just say like, well, it just makes your muscles denser and you're like super strong, but you don't look different. I think that's just their justification for having like a teenage girl with superpowers. I mean, it works. Like it's, <laughs> it's it's Marvel Comics, whatever. I mean, it's all ridiculous. It's fine. Yeah, it's all ridiculous. Everything in this is ridiculous. Yeah, they don't need to use like a crazy machine <laughs> and like electricity, and like with heat Steve. arrays or whatever it was. Yeah, Steve Rogers, where it was a whole process. They injected so much stuff into him. So much science went into him. Pure science juice. But yeah, it's weird because like originally you thought like, oh, maybe Zemo is going to be like the the ultimate bad guy of the show, but he never really is. It's no, I think I think he's being saved for, like, once again for a later date. And it's kind of funny how like his whole thing like gets resolved because you know in the episodes you're like hey like Zemo killed like Black Panther's father I wonder if like anybody from Wakanda are gonna come and then all of a sudden it's just like oh crap that IO girl from Civil War is in here oh yeah this makes sense <laughs> yeah and he's not escaping the door melage <laughs> like, he's like why did you break him out we're gonna fucking no fuck you yeah <laughs> we're gonna take your arm off <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, he ultimately shows up for some fun episodes and then uh, pretty much exits pretty soon. He's, he, we, he's they tease him at the end of the second episode. He's there in two, three, I mean, three, four, and into five, and then we only see him briefly in the last episode. Yeah, you, we see him at the so, end. So he's kind of just there in the middle. Yeah, we see the raft. They always are mentioning the raft, but we've really barely seen it. It actually much. got mentioned a bunch in like the Netflix stuff too, which may or may not be considered canon. Probably not, definitely not, it's not. Yeah, I mean, when you think about like all the Marvel villains that are still alive, there's not many of them, but like the few that are just like, just give me like abomination in a prison cell or something. We'll, we're probably getting that soon. <laughs> yeah. He's supposed to be in She-Hulk, so. Okay. He's probably there. We know Baron Zemo's there. There's a couple of characters that, at least in the Netflix side of things, were there. Right. Like uh, Jessica Jones' buddy Trish is apparently there. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Not that it matters for this. Yeah. It's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess um, <laughs> Justin Hammer might be there. Eh, he was kind of just, they kind of showed him at a regular prison. Yeah. He's a rich guy, did some shady stuff. He, he, be in a white collar prison at best. <laughs> Whiplash is dead. Dead as a doornail. Yeah. I'm like, Yellow Jacket, I dead. think is dead. Yeah, he, he dead. <laughs> okay. He got like crushed by his own armor. He's Ghost is alive? She might be there? No, because she was on the lamb. She was okay. like, yeah, she escaped. Okay. But yeah. was not evil, so, you know. Her and Giant Man are just fine. Yeah, they're frenemies, <laughs> you know. Um... Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, too many too they've killed too many villains. I guess like various Hydra agents. Yeah, but mm, who cares? Yeah. Zemo's the big one and you would assume, you know, Abomination is probably there. Yeah. And oh, well, no. Yeah, why isn't Vulture there? I don't know. They just yeah. they just lock him in a regular <laughs> yeah, prison. Yeah, he's in regular prison. I mean, to be fair, yeah, he was like a crazy wingsuit, but he was he was just a thief. Yeah, but he could like MacGyver himself out of prison if they're not careful. Yeah, but does, I don't think he is. Yeah. Though it looks like he's escaping prison in that Morpheus movie. Right. MCU adjacent. <laughs> that, maybe Morpheus is in the raft. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the stupidest character. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting a movie. I will not watch it. Yes, you will. I will only watch it if... I'm told it's good, but okay. <laughs> we're, we're just gonna go off on a side. No, Morpheus is the worst character in all of Spider-Man. He's like a dumbass vampire in the cartoon. He had weird suction cups on his hand and he drunk people's plasma. He That's was, a censorship thing. Yeah, he was always like, like sad and stupid and he had a thing with Black Cat and you're like, why does Black Cat like him? He sucks. <laughs> What is his special specialty? He's a biologist, I guess. And then he turned himself into a vampire. 
I can't even remember in the cartoon if he was sick or if he had some weird, like, dumb disease that doesn't exist. I don't care. Morpheus sucks. Back to Falcon and Winter Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say this, one thing I really did like about the show is that they, throughout the entire series, we see why Steve Rogers gave Sam Wilson the shield. Yeah. He's got that endless amount of patience and compassion that he throws that Carly girl's way, even though after a certain point she doesn't deserve it. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, it's almost, there is an episode where, you know, Sam seems to be getting through to Carly and then John Walker kind of like walks in and he's just like, okay, I gave you enough chance. Come on, we're taking you in. And, you know, this leads to John Walker's friend getting killed and um, then John Walker doing the famous moment of the show where he takes the shield and maybe decapitate somebody with it. I think he caved his chest in. Yeah. I mean, if this was on Netflix. Ooh, that head. We would have seen it roll. Yeah. <laughs> This would have been a kingpin car door situation. Oh my god! But yeah, he uh, he he kills somebody with the shield. The shield's covered in blood. You know, Falcon and Winter Soldier have to fight John Walker to get the shield back. In a pretty brutal fight, like yeah, like they like at that point, Walker is snapped. He's he's like lost it. They they're trying to like pry it off, like Thanos gauntlet style. The fight also kind of reminds me a little bit of the. Bucky and Cap versus Iron Man fight where Iron Man fucking loses his mind, tries to kill Bucky. Yeah, there's a lot of factors too because it's like John Walker lost his friend. He's He also just took the super soldier serum, so... All his insecurities, all his paranoia brought to the forefront and yeah. then his best friend dies and he just goes, Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he murders people, murders somebody in a crowd of people. There's like cell phone video of it. Symbolism. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, Falcon and Bucky get the shield back, and then, um... I like that moment where, like, after the fight, like, Bucky takes it, like, throws it to, at, by Falcon, gives him, like, a look of, like, fucking told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we get kind of, like, episode five of just, like, sort of, uh, Bucky and Falcon sort of... Almost like... Uh, Trying to like pick up the pieces a little yeah, bit. Yeah, talk, talk things out. Yeah. Like kind of coming to an understanding of exactly like... Sam has an important conversation with Isaiah. who's all like, they'll never let a black man be Captain America, which kind of reaffirms Sam's like, you know what, I don't care if they'll let me. I'll do it. Yeah. And yeah, I guess episode five, even though it's like the episode with no action, it's one of the... I mean, best except episodes. for the let's beat the crap out of yeah. John Walker. Yeah, the, the beginning, right the I guess. Yeah, you know what? There's action in every episode. They manage to have at least one big scene in every episode, whether it's at the beginning, the end, or what have you. Yeah. And um, we get, our, you know, Sam training to be Captain America, finally. It, it's kind of weird because, like, a bunch of time, I guess, passes before the Flag Smasher's next move, and it's one of those Probably things. Probably a few weeks, maybe. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like kind of like, we'll call you when we know something, because after everything happened, the Flag Smashers are kind of laying low before, you know, their next attack. And they also got to get to from, like, Germany or whatever to freaking the U.S. Yeah. So, you know, there's some downtime, and... You know, Falcon trains. Walker got stripped of his Captain America title. Yeah, that part's kind of like messed up because, you know, he even says like, you know, I'm a soldier and I did all this. And they're like, well, we're not dishonorably discharging you, but you're going to lose all your benefits. They said stuff. other than honorable discharge? Yeah. I've never heard that before. Yeah, I'm not very familiar with like the military terminology for, uh, I guess... He's being court-martialed? Well, he's not being court-martialed. Okay, like, I guess he's just being trialed then. Like... Because if he was court-martialed, then he would be dishonorably discharged. I guess, I guess this was, like, their way of, like, look, we're not going to dishonorably discharge you. We're other than honorably discharging you. Is basically, like, look, we're, like, we're not going to... You've served us well. We're not going to throw you in jail or anything, but we're washing our hands of you. Yeah, and... Basically they, taking no blame in picking the wrong man to wield that shield because psych evaluations, they're important. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. And they do say stuff like, we're taking away your pension and yeah. stuff like that, which is like, that's kind of messed up. Like, I mean, he did kill a guy, but at the yeah, same time, like, yeah, I know. He's a, a soldier. He yeah. battle. Broke his brain. Friend killed. 
It's like he killed somebody and somebody recorded on a cell phone. He killed a terrorist. That's true. He killed a the terrorist. terrorist. Specifically, the guy who was holding him while Carly tried to kill him, but then his buddy stopped her. Yeah, I guess it makes no sense because he did kill a bad guy. And, you know, Sam and Bucky, I've seen this pointed out by some other people, they've killed a lot of bad guys, too. Yeah. In fact, all the Avengers have. Sam blew up a helicopter in the first episode. <laughs> he did. <laughs> I'm pretty he, sure that pilot didn't live. No, he didn't. <laughs> Dude, he like he killed a bunch of people in like the first five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so much blood on Bucky's hands. Seriously. Not just counting the people he killed as Winter Soldier. And all, no, let's not forget all the the terrorists that Iron Man murdered. Yeah. He was who was he like, held accountable to? He blew up a guy in a tank. Yeah. Sure, they were terrorists, but he still killed them. Yeah, it, it's kind of weird when you think about it. Cause it's, like, it's like so murky. It's because like, oh, because the guy was on his back. I guess because you know, the guy was on his back being like, no, please. And people recorded it. So it's... That's, it's, that's fair, I guess. Yeah, you know, so I get that. Yeah, I do. I get that. But like, I mean, maybe the guy in the helicopter that Sam blew up was like, oh, God, no, please. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, we didn't hear it and there's no one with a cell phone. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it just takes you out of it because, like, in you know, Mar Marvel heroes for the most part are never really being like, besides Spider Man, who are like, we don't kill people. Like, like all the Marvel heroes kind of kill people. So yeah, like Spider Man's really the only one that doesn't kill. Yeah, Wolverine, killer. Hulk, killer. Captain America, killer. Yeah, he is a killer. Fought a war. He had a gun. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's really only Spider-Man. Um, maybe Miss Marvel, the new one? I could see her not being a killer. Yeah. She's like a teenager. Yeah. It'd be messed up if, like, episode three of Miss like Marvel... She, crushes a guy in her giant hands <laughs> and his, like, Smart. eyeballs pop out. <laughs> Punches a dude off a building. It'd just be like, damn, that's hardcore. <laughs> it's like, shit, this is dark. Yeah. <laughs> like, even Daredevil kills people. Well, yeah, he, he did like that ninja on fire. Yeah. That guy was that guy was hella dead until he wasn't. I mean, the pool's like, yeah, but I feel bad about it. <laughs> I go to confession. Forgive me, Father, for I have killed so many ninjas. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I guess like, you know, we get... Uh, you know, staying with the John Walker thing, uh, after his little uh, trial, we get our big cameo of the series. Yes, who is Elaine from Seinfeld. And yes, playing someone with an impossibly long name. <laughs> yeah, I just know her first name is Valerie, I think. No, her first name is like Contessa, and like Valerie is like a middle name or something. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. This is the person that everybody's like, she's Madame Hydra, maybe, Sometime. we don't know. No, she was at least once in the comics. Yeah. She's, like, she's a very shady Nick Fury-esque character who's probably shadier than Nick Fury, and it, by, at the end of the series, she rec recruits John Walker to become U.S. agent. Maybe they're doing the Thunderbolts. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. It, I mean, it, she's it's... great, first of all. Yeah, she is good. Um, you know, I like her in everything I've seen her in. Yeah, so. she, she, and like, I've never seen her play a role like this. So she's just like, she's like savoring it. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I guess she's <laughs> going to be like, I'm maybe bad guy Nick Fury. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, we were actually supposed to see her in the Black Widow movie, apparently. So we'll be seeing her again real soon. Yeah. I wonder if she's one of the people that, like, was around for the five years or if she got snapped or what. Maybe. I don't know. We need, like, a list. Marvel, make a list. Who was here, who wasn't. Yeah. And stop changing your minds. I'm pretty sure Sharon was snapped at one point, but now she clearly wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Give, give me a give me a Marvel MCU data book so we can keep all this straight and stop and don't contradict it yeah. even though you will because I know you will yeah because it'll suit your needs at a later date like how Avengers happened ten years before Spider Man eight years before Spider Man Homecoming but somehow but Civil War just happened in 2016 yeah no <laughs> stop it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I guess, like, the finale is we get we finally get Sam as Captain America, and he looks awesome. Yeah, his suit looks great. suit is cool. He's still got the wings. and Slightly different from the comic book version, but I think it looks a little better. Yeah, yeah. He's got, like, his shield kind of... I mean, we saw it at the end of Endgame, and 
Um, it's weird because his shield sort of has this like kind of outline in the star I've noticed and I'm like that's the same that he had in the comics too so well, to be fair and this doesn't get mentioned it's not the original shield technically yeah because the original shield got smashed yeah Thanos destroyed it yeah and Steve Rogers didn't go to the past alternate timeline dealy with it he just showed up with it yeah so it's a either a brand new shield or a reforged shield yeah. So it can be slightly different. Yeah, it works. It works. Yeah. Steve's like, and it actually works because it's like also Steve's it was shield a... got broke, and then like Steve's like, here's like your shield for when you're Captain America. It's like Zen. it belongs to somebody else. It's like no, it doesn't, because mine's mine broke. Yeah. You saw it. Thanos destroyed it. It's messed up. Oh, you didn't see it because you weren't there on my left yet. <laughs> but you saw the broken shield. I had to like, rub my wound with it. Yeah. That movie was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> And I guess the only peeve I have with this show is one thing. What's that? Okay, so if you go from Endgame to Captain America 4 and Sam's Captain America, it's like, okay, cool. So this show, technically, you don't need to watch, but it opens up one of the most annoying things in comics, the well-actually guy. So if you're watching the movies and, like, and you're like, oh, hey, like, Sam Wilson's Captain America. That's cool. Well, actually, there's a whole show about his struggle of being Captain America. And if you watched it, you would have understood it better. All the nuances and all that. Yeah, that's my only piece. It's like, wait, who's that blonde lady that's the power broker? Well, actually, if you watched all the movies and saw Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, nobody likes the well, actually guy. Well, actually. Oh. <laughs> see what she did there. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, the show is really good. Yes, it's I, worth a watch. I was surprised that they actually gave... Like, I honestly thought in the finale we were going to... Because we saw John Walker forging his like own makeshift Captain America shield. I'm like, oh, geez. Are they going to have to like fight like an unhinged John Walker again? But he shows up, helps out in the final battle, and even has like a moment of either chasing down the girl who killed his best friend or saving innocent people and he does the right thing and helps tries to save the innocent people yeah so he, he kind of like starts his road to redemption i guess i was surprised honestly that they did that yeah and you know i think we did mention but sharon is the power broker and she's, she ends up killing carly with a gun yeah just like boom boom you dead and she's like it was me i was evil the whole time but nobody knows it yeah now she's got now she's working for the government again gonna get all them secrets and yeah. sell them to people yeah. until Wolverine stabs her in Madripoor in like five years. What would your uncle have to say, Sharon? Your <laughs> uncle that you made out with that one time? That's an al he, He's her uncle in an alternate timeline, and I'm sticking to that. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, we get the Sam gets his first big Captain America speech. Yeah. Well, mostly good, but then some of it's just like the, the whole like, don't call them terrorists, even though that's what they're doing. They're doing terrorism. Yeah. But like, I did like it for the most part. I do like that, that it just kind of boiled down to, it's like, well, what would you have us do? Well, try for one. Yeah. Try harder, you jackass. <laughs> Wish we could have Captain America storm up at the Congress be, and set in the Senate and be like, hey, fucking try. Yeah, do your job. It's just like, Get there's it not done. an easy way out of this. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah. Work through it. God. Yeah. <laughs> I like that little moment where, like, Bucky's all snarky. It's just like, oh, I stopped listening after Black Man and Stars and Stripes. What? <laughs> but I do like how you, like, pats him on the back. It's like, good job, Cap. Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty interesting how, like, Sam is Captain America, but he's also Uncle Sam. <laughs> I, I wonder how, if he was an uncle in the comics, and that's one of the main reasons, like, oh, he's got to become Captain America. Yeah. Or if like, they just kind of, like, realize that if he... They, they, it was they, just unintentional, and they're like, hey, wait a minute. Like... I mean, he, he made sense for a choice because he was always Captain America's partner. So, you know, partners always, it's like how the Robins is sent to Batman. Yeah. It's just, you know, you upgrade. And like, so it kind of makes sense. So I'm like, I wonder, is he an uncle in the comics? Did they make him an uncle when they were like, you know, if he becomes Captain America, he's Uncle Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, fun. Yeah. Totally. Happy, happy accident, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, all, all I can say is, it's another good Marvel thing. They're very good at making good things. Generally pretty good. It's usually 
enjoyable. This one gets a little heavy in points, but it's, it's the right kind of heavy. They don't beat you over the head with it. They just be like, yeah, this is how it is. Yeah. What of it? It's very, it's very real, uh, you know, and very, I guess, uh, current right now for some of the stuff that happens. Weird, you know? Weirdly, because like this was being shot before the pandemic. It, I'm sure it was an accident. Kevin Feige was like, huh, well, I guess we'll just lean into it. And somewhere, some Disney executive was like, hey, 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 perfect. <laughs> well, I have a secret theory about this. Every, every, every Marvel thing has been super successful. The only reason why I could think of, Kevin Feige is secretly a time traveler. So he just goes in the future. He's like, nope, that didn't work. Yep. Rewrite it. <laughs> yep, he, he went back into the past to make movies the, the way he knows people would like him. Because for the most part, when you watch a movie, uh, at least the Marvel movies, it's like, hey, they actually did the thing I wanted them to do. <laughs> Where before, none of the movies ever did the thing they wanted you to do. <laughs> and I'm like... He must be a time traveler. He's not sure. the only way he's been successful making comic book movies. <laughs> and Lord knows he's not sharing that secret with the Star Wars people. Yep. <laughs> Except for maybe John Favreau. <laughs> Possibly. But that, that's just a theory. <laughs> it's an interesting theory. <laughs> I think he's either just incredibly lucky or just the fact that he also happened to be a fan. And as a fan... He wants to see the same kind of things that fans want to see. Yeah, he's so. either a fan or a time traveler. One of those two. <laughs> <laughs> or he made some kind of deal with Mephisto. Maybe. Who was Mephisto in this crush? Oh, I guess that's the thing with all these Marvel shows now. Yes. Who, who was actually Mephisto? Yes, who was Mephisto? I guess it was Sharon, maybe? Mm. Or no. Valerie? Mm. No, not them, no. Who was Mephisto, Bill? Me. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm the devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird joke that needs to go away. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it will once WandaVision fades further and further back in the MCU timeline. Yeah, we'll just have to deal with every show being the lead up to X-Men. <laughs> I mean, this, I think, did more to set up the X-Men than WandaVision did. That's true. Because, like, Madripoor, Wolverine's Bar. That's more than fake Quicksilver. Yeah. It's just like, maybe Wolverine exists until we finally do get the X-Men and then we find out they're in a parallel reality. Mother. <laughs> 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 or maybe not. I don't know. It, it would be very hard to connect Magneto to World War II in present day. So it's like... Uh, he got snapped. It's fine. He got snapped. <laughs> he was frozen with Cap. He was frozen. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's ways you can do it. <laughs> Yeah. Or maybe. Well, they can update him. They can even update him in universe. And because I still want him to be retconned as Scarlet, which is real dad. Mm. What, what doesn't exist anymore in the MCU now that we found out in this show? Sokovia. Oh. Who says it has to be a real genocide? Oh, that's interesting. Boom. You're welcome, Kevin. <laughs> Checks, I'll take <laughs> checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those fake checks with where where it's like the signature is just a middle finger. <laughs> You're like, what the hell are Feige bucks? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, good nowhere. But I guess you could wipe your ass with this. <laughs> but you probably shouldn't because it's printed on highly highly toxic paper. <laughs> I'll give you really bad butt cancer. Oh God! <laughs> Even if you touch it, you have butt cancer now. It comes through your, through your hands. See, that's his actual secret. He steals ideas from other people and gives them butt cancer. That's it. Boom! We from the it future, because he's a time traveler. Oh my God! But future butt cancer. <laughs> my God! Oh, I touched it with my hand, on my face. Um, this really went off the rails. Yes. Goodbye, everybody. Next episode. More Mortal Kombat, <laughs> or something different. <laughs>